This video is sponsored by Keeps. Watch the what? War. Bullets. Explosions. Chemicals. Worse. <laughs> but every day, the weaponry that supplements these wars only gets better. Mm. Tens of billions of dollars. Thousands of hours of manpower. All spent on technology based on one thing. Come complete on. and utter annihilation of the other side. Contraptions too sick to even ponder. And over the decades, Jesus. this new technology has changed warfare immeasurably. And it's only getting more advanced. <laughs> Robot dogs, sentry guns, surveillance drones, and more what? are either already being used or are in early stages of testing. And as a result, the landscape of war is changing forever. And with 20 years of simulating modern combat with complete immersion, DICE sought to give us a glimpse into this future with their next game. And in 2021, with their most up-to-date tech, gargantuan budget, and four whole dev teams at their disposal, they were set to launch the biggest and best Battlefield game of all time. Battlefield 2042. I mean, the trailers were nice, though. But first, your hair. There's a chance that over time, it could fall off. Just like it did to me. And two out of three men will experience your door stops with Kick Boss. It has just fully launched, and it's... The hype. November 20th, 2018. What? Battlefield 5 has just fully launched, and it's looking a bit rough. What? <sighs> Guys, Critic it's scores not are me. looking I'm good, fine. but user reviews, eh, not so much. Wait, this what? Is totally good, but user reviews, eh, not so much. This game is totally not ready for release. Fake history. No atmosphere. Zero out of ten. Very slop. SJW propaganda. Rest into feeling like a Also, the marketing. Not the best. Turns oh, out that insulting decent. your fans and telling them not to buy your game isn't too productive here. Damn. The trailer and cosmetics of the game also proved to be controversial. What huh? is that? What the fuck is that? <laughs> and the launch came packaged with a horde of glitches, bad anti-cheat, unbalanced weapons, and massive portions of the game delayed. Overall, not great. It had also been two consecutive World War Battlefield games, and the charm was starting to wear off. Fans oh. longed for the days of high-rise skyscrapers, map-changing events, jets, Je I thought that helis, was, that was pretty and so on. Fun to play when I played last time. Anyway, it ran now, when so it comes to military too. shooters, Dice isn't just anyone. They're EA's golden boy. EA sees Battlefield 5's sales are, well, disappointing. So they decide it's time for a change. <coughs> And they know just what players want. It's back to the future, kids. And this is going to be a big one. And with that, pre-production of the next Battlefield begins. Naturally, we don't hear much about Battlefield for a while. However, throughout 2021, leaks start to drip, and we get our first taste. Rumours of a return to modern warfare, a soft reboot of the franchise, a game heavily inspired by Battlefield 3, 128 players on PC and next gen. Wow. Then came the horribly grainy, seizure inducing leaked trailer footage. Quality's not great, but we're parched. <laughs> then came another. Holy. And another. They're eventually stitched into one slightly coherent trailer and. Oh yeah. Now this looked like Battlefield. But finally, on June the 9th, 2021. It well, the next battlefield is officially revealed. And it looks amazing. Stunning, yep, not wrong. Also, we were now practically bathing in information. <laughs> First, the bad news. The squad system is being revamped into a specialist system. Basically, this system sounds more akin to a hero shooter than a classic battlefield <laughs> game. This is controversial, but we'll have to see how it plays out. And then there's no campaign. Oh. Not a massive loss, to be honest. But, that means more resources for multiplayer. Also, a ton of leaks are confirmed. 128 players, massive scale warfare, modern combat, and turns out, 
EA is throwing four whole studios at it. They also say that it's way ahead of schedule. Also, there would be three whole game sections. All Out Warfare, the traditional battlefield experience, including Conquest and Rush, Hazard Zone, DICE's second take on a battle royale, partly inspired by Tarkov, and Portal, a game mode that includes maps, weapons, and soldiers from classic Battlefield games. Things were sounding great. And Battlefield 2042 was coming out in just four months, in October 2021. Is that many studios they can make a great game? It depends though. Like even COD, like like COD will have like seven studios or whatever, so like five, six studios. It'll be they make a good game, so it's not. But then it's delayed by a month. But don't worry. Depends what Everyone they do. will have a chance depends to what jump they into make, the free they get the studios for. in just a few weeks' time. It's Friday, October sixth, and at twelve a.m. PDT, the beta goes online. And the first few players log on. Oh, it, it, it was a little weird. Awful player netcode results in rubber banding and abysmal hit registration. Oh my god! The balancing is dreadful. Bugs everywhere. The, bro! And the game just generally the game, feels off. The hit reg it was so fucking bad. It also, still is pretty bad to be uh, honest. Where was the voice chat? A scoreboard? Anyone? What the hell is even that? This was looking real bad. The elevators. Redditors take to the streets within hours. But DICE has an announcement. Gentlemen, relax. The build for the beta is a few months old. They tell us. <laughs> the current build at DICE is in a lot better shape, and a ton of issues have been fixed. There's nothing to worry about. Redditors rejoice immediately. The Thank fucking God. door, dude. The game was going to be fine. Phew. That was a close one. And now the wait for release begins. Mm. Midnight, 12th of November, 2021. We'd waited months for release, and today was the day. All right, boys, it's go time. Players who'd forked out $100 to play the game a week before release boot up the game and jump in. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Turn left or right. Of course, of course. Players are greeted with an experience so soul crushingly terrible and fundamentally broken. The game is review bombed mere hours after it launches. Only a handful of things from the beta had actually been fixed. In fact, for some people, even more seemed broken. Enjoyed the horrible performance of the beta? How about more crashes? Even worse netcode. <laughs> Blurrier graphics? Coming right up. Performance is awful on PC. Disgusting. And flickering and pop-ins plagues console. <laughs> oh my god! What's wrong with your face? Some fans are holding out for a comprehensive day one patch that would fix most of these issues when the game launched for everyone. But turns out, that had already gone up. Here's what it fixed. But when the game actually works, you can jump into the fleshed out and richly developed world of Battlefield 2042. The world is dark and gritty. The climate has gotten so bad that natural disasters are almost ubiquitous, causing states to fail everywhere. Millions are starving, left without a country, and fighting a constant resource war worldwide, causing Germany's bankruptcy and... Wait, hold on. There's no campaign, so literally none of this matters at all. Also, if the world is so awful, why are the soldiers like this? What a time to be alive! Well, well, well. That was fun. I am not overconfident. I'm just better than everyone else. What the hell was that? 
Bullet spread and hit registration is still abominable. <laughs> and people are unloading full mags of their weapons at point blank range. Uh, and not yeah. landing a single hit. I don't remember that. There are many such cases. <laughs> the balancing? Well, that's still awful too. That is one big pile of shit. The PP-29 is almost the only viable automatic weapon, as it's the only one that can sort of land a shot. So naturally, half of the lobby is running around with it. Hovercrafts are also incredibly overpowered, being that they're gunned. They spawn almost indefinitely, and there's ten of them headed directly towards your team at all times. Oh, poof. They can also climb buildings and literally fly. Then there's the squad system, essentially the core pillar of a battlefield game. This time round, it's not looking too hot. First off, it's a game with 128 players. Your squad is limited to four. Not a great start. Then, unless you're with friends, you're forced into a squad of randomers, you're in. and you can't pick which squad to move to, or create your own. A friends come online halfway through your game? Unlucky. It's time to back out to the main menu, invite them, and search for a new one. Also, there are no squad points, no chat, no spawn preview, no emotes, and you can't see what equipment your squad is carrying, essentially rendering your squad absolutely useless. I mean, also, the addition of specialists means classes are now a thing of the past, making team play even more redundant. The specialist system also means that players on both teams look exactly the same. Yeah, Didn't I mean, see that tiny was. friendly dot above your teammate's head? Unlucky, son. Maps in 2042 are abhorrently underdesigned, and around 70% of the lobby are concentrated on a couple of flags, <laughs> leaving about four players on any other objective at any given time. This is in a game of 128 people. The map size also results in running extremely long distances, only to get obliterated by snipers or helis. The actual graphics of the maps are in some cases worse than Battlefield 5. The destruction? Not great. Uh, Some buildings walls are still yeah, destroyable, but you can't take down the actual buildings. Something you could do more than a decade ago in Bad Company 2. That's a lot of damage! There are still destructive events, but needless to say, they fall a bit short of the mark. <laughs> the content? Uh, where, where is it? <laughs> This game has a total of 22 weapons. Battlefield 4 had 83. Battlefield 4 also had three times the gadgets, three more maps, and a ton more customization for aircraft and helicopters. Then there's fewer game modes at launch, no stat page, no server browser, dog tags are gone, and so on. There's nothing. The movement. The, 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 I said the, the, pre-launch that so, they were building. So it's why I kept saying when the game felt so void. There's nothing to do. What do you do? And what they did with Battlefield. What, what do you do? Let's what is there to do in the game, man? Just Crouch playing. sprinting? Not in the game. Rolling? Then the progress thing to look at is living. Lying on your back while prone? Absent. Grabbing a ledge while falling? Not in the game. Literally just leaning left and right like every game post 2012? Nope. You also can't dive under the water like you could in every Battlefield since 4. However, if you stab the water enough times, you can glitch yourself under it. The UI is so dreadful that you can't even tell if your settings are toggled on or off. The melee, well, it speaks for itself. Assassinations are in the game, but they're lazily done. The man you're about to kill is prone. Why don't you help him up, kick him back down again, then stab him in the chest? That makes a lot of sense. DICE added AI bots to the game to pad out lobbies and make sure they're never dead. One issue. They're absolutely moronic. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I'm kind of retarded. <laughs> and lastly, there's still no stat page, voice chat, or even a scoreboard. And all of that was just the actual game design. Then there were the bucks. Are I those mean, my th footsteps th on all. dry concrete? Why is my gun firing blanks? Did you just die with so much as a toe touching a wall or rock? Sorry, pal. Nothing I can do. Shroom. You just parachute down from the sky? Well, there's a chance that it stays deployed <laughs> after you land. Meaning there's now a parachute above you at all times, completely giving away your position. V. 
vehicle physics are slightly broken. Helicopter hot landings are hot. Every time you jump in a tank gun, it's so jittery you might as well be sat directly on top of the engine. By the way, you can actually shoot yourself with that gun while getting inside. Nice. Then there's the random people frozen all around the map, no hit detection on buildings, flying across the map using a ladder, and so on. But hey, the main game's not great. What? And Hazard Zone is pretty forgettable. But at least Portal Mode is decent. Yeah, Wait, right. What's that? Yeah, I the ability it. It okay. to earn XP from it has been removed because of people boosting. That was enough 2042 for one yeah, day. I remember that with Pokemon. Remember? People are confused. What the hell, Dice? Where was the stat page? A voice chat? <laughs> A scoreboard? Legacy features. What the hell, Dice? Where was the stat page? A voice chat? A scoreboard? Legacy features. Dice response. Their scientists and engineers had been strapped for time and couldn't get them working for launch. But they promised- I mean, I what they're telling me with, it's not that funny. You don't get it, dude. You don't get it. These intricate and time-consuming features would eventually be implemented. But forget about that. In terms of basic features, the game seemed to have regressed more than a decade. Even the graphics in some cases. <laughs> Something was clearly disastrously wrong. And naturally, okay, the inevitable nice. happens. What was a strong start with over 100k players on Steam soon starts to dwindle. Within a single month, the game falls below Sixth Battlefield game. 5's player numbers. No, 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 no. Player numbers get so bad that <laughs> cheaters literally discontinue selling their own cheats because of it. Damage control mode was now on. Wow, Dice we... devs gather around. What do players want? What do they need? 27 months of pure what about content from Mr. Doc. How I'm enjoying my Steve, draft us up a Santa Claus outfit. Well, I mean, half the game. That looks amazing. Jeff, whip us up a medieval knight, would you? Day of the Dead Man. Baz, get on it. What about a clown skin? A clown. Perfect. Perfect. These skins end up getting leaked ahead of their launch, and the backlash is so bad. Dice is forced to drop them. A series of Dice tweets also stokes some fires. First, a Dice employee tweets about fans' brutal expectations. A stat page, voice chat, basic squad mechanics, a mid-game scoreboard. Brutal indeed. A pre-launch tweet where a Dice employee says that the game was in a solid state and that it wasn't his first rodeo also gains notoriety. So in a shocking twist, the developers of a released AAA game rush to actually finish their game. November 24th, patch 2 is released. This addresses the crazy bullet spread on most weapons, as well as addressing some other balancing issues. 2nd of December, patch 3 is released. This brings UI improvements and more balancing changes. Also, the scoreboard was supposed to release in this update, but that's been delayed. Do it later. Also, Season 1 of the game is delayed till summer, a full 6 months after launch, as DICE are so busy actually finishing the game. March 8th, 2022. Patch 3.3 is released. After months of work, DICE's finest engineers and top talent working around the clock, billions in R&D, and unprecedented resource allocation, DICE had cracked it, and at the UN General Assembly, they showcase an actual, functioning, scoreboard. It's okay. My god. Nothing short of a miracle. April 18th, patch 4. It had taken 5 months of work post-launch, but now DICE's quantum mechanical scientists are on a roll. First the scoreboard, now they'd cracked something arguably more impressive. What is it? Multiplayer. Voice chat. Which one of you motherfuckers <laughs> called my mom gay? <laughs> Everybody type in the chat, Alex is a stupid- DICE goes on to win multiple government communications contracts, and everyone on the team is nominated for Nobel Prizes, respectively. Jesus! Oh, and after this patch, Jesus. those physics-defying hovercrafts Heavy. should no longer be flying through the stratosphere. Despite these cutting-edge advancements, 
almost no one is actually playing the game. Over 100,000 have actually signed a petition to get it refunded. But on June the 9th, Season 1 is finally released. Version 1.0. Finally, what DICE considered a full game. Seven months after launch, and Season 1 adds one map, a specialist, two guns, and two helicopters. Ooh. Compare this to Battlefield 1's first DLC that included four maps, two operations, a new mode, six new weapons, two tanks, and a new class. Jesus. Hmm. Despite the lack of content, this does revive the player base somewhat. I mean, Season 1 also includes a ton of patches, barely. one of which fixes the bug where landing your helicopter at the pace of a falling feather would result in instantaneous explosion. <laughs> Plans to rework maps and classes are also underway. So what went wrong? Well, let's dive in. A month after the game's launch, prominent leaker Tom Henderson releases a video explaining, from his sources, the inside scoop of development. It's interesting. According to him, due to EA's restrictions on creative freedom, a ton of DICE's veteran developers leave the studio to form their own after Battlefield 5's release. This is also when pre-production for 2042 is just getting going. EA looks around. They see a market filled with battle royales and hero shooters, all just bursting at the seams with money. They want in, and they think Battlefield would be perfect for it. Their game plan is simple. Listen lads, see all that popular stuff out there? Do that. And DICE gets to work. In February 2019, Respawn's Apex Legends releases and basically starts printing EA money straight out the game. EA likes. So DICE takes a bit of inspiration. And in late 2019, a battle royale setting and the concept of specialists it makes just fun. I think it makes Now there are a few problems surfacing. The first up being the game's engine, Frostbite. Battlefield 5 was developed in just two years, meaning DICE didn't have the time to update the game's engine to the newest version. Oh. This time round, however, their game had three years in the oven. So DICE has plenty of time to upgrade. Now, it was DICE's devs who'd actually created Frostbite in the first place. So this would be a breeze. Wait, right. hold on. Haven't all those devs just left? Oh man. Oh god. So That's... barely anyone left at DICE knows how to actually use the engine. And naturally, 2042's Frostbite update ends up taking a while. A long while. In fact, upgrading the engine alone takes over half of the game's development time. What was supposed to take 6 months, has now taken 18. Oh. Fast forward to March 2020, and everyone's working from home now. This is not good. A process that takes a few minutes in office could now take hours. Also, EA has decided to backtrack, and is now saying they want 2042 back to a more classic Battlefield formula. DICE now has to spend a ton of time redesigning the game and the original concept of 2042 is tacked on as a new game mode. Hazard Zone. August 2020. I the mean, concepts and ideas are finalised, and the actual cool, game development dog begins. Shit. This leaves DICE around one year okay. and three months. Okay, people say it was going to be Tarkov, it was nothing like Tarkov. You'd spawn in, you look for a thing, you get it, and then you extract, and it was like the easiest, most hollow thing I've ever seen in my life. It was so bad. Actual development so fucking time. boring. This is very short for a AAA game of this scale. And that's compounded by the fact everyone's working from home. Also, new so devs lame. are still joining. In fact, at this point, almost 90% of DICE's designers had joined after Battlefield 1. 60% during 2042. DICE is now a completely different studio. I don't even know who you are. In February that's 2021, so cooked, uh... EA's CEO comes out to the world. The Battlefield team is doing an incredible job. The game is way ahead of internal milestones. Isn't that right? It's not, it is pretty cool. Um, it gives me a bit of vibe sure. of um, Back for Blood. A month later, and DICE realises they're definitely not going to hit internal milestones. Frostbite engineers are then forced to drop their projects and jump on board. Time goes by, and progress on the game is made. And by August, the game is being beta tested internally. It's not long before the consensus is clear. This game is hot dog shit. <laughs> the only option here is clearly another delay. 
This game could use at least another year in the oven. No, says EA. No more delays. No more ovens. The game is launching this year. DICE has no choice. And on the 12th of November 2021, the game releases. Battlefield 2042 today is in a much more solid state, uh, and DICE has even recently released their first reworked map. It's Here's fine. how that's going. However, at this point, few people are still playing the game. Uh, I, 2042's I the Steam piece. numbers stoop down to sub 5,000, and the game slips further into irrelevance. Claims begin to circulate that EA is now in abandoned ship mode, and that 2042 <laughs> devs are now down to a skeleton crew. And so, another one of EA's once talented de More them than players. developers has been squeezed dry, its talents harvested, and its franchise forever tainted. I enjoyed that. It was fun. Okay, next up. Yo, this is X. X on yeah. the beat, yo. Okay. Why you my voice as well? That S. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know, he's just so soy. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know, he's just so soy.